Hello ladies, so let's just see, I'm uh, on live for the uh, the secret juicy aspects of um, feminine sexuality and through Tantra. Let's just see who comes on board. I've just realised I left my phone the other side, hang on. Just so I can uh, see if anyone is coming on live with us. I'm just waiting for it to connect. So whilst we're waiting, so apologies for last time I was on live because I was chatting very enthusiastically about all the misconceptions about tantra sexuality and how sexuality works in modern times. I got carried away and was on for quite a long time. So I promise on this one that I'm going to be sweet and short and to the point. Um, and it's a 15 minute chat only. So again, as I said, apologizing for that. And uh, let's see, okay, I can't see anything coming up on my phone at the moment. There we are. So I'm just seeing if anyone is coming on board. Oh, we'll see, okay. Well, in that case, let's just get started and anyone that wants to watch this afterwards is uh, very welcome to contact me and speak to me about any aspects. So I was just going to talk to you really about where things sit. So we've had all the misconceptions of what tantra sexuality is perceived to be in the last talk. And um, just to introduce this today, what I want to cover is what is uh, modern day sexuality in comparison to tantric sexuality? How does that differ? and why therefore are there some incredible benefits in actually opening yourself up and learning about tantric practice. And the other aspect as well um, that I want to talk about then is actually what is feminine, what is the role of the feminine and how does it differ in tantra sexuality, what is it that you actually achieve from that, so we're going to talk a little bit of how that works and how you can master that from an energetic point of view because everything in tantra is about energy. And then we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, uh, what uh, you can do um, uh, to start to evolve that. Obviously, I can't give out the actual teachings on tantric sexuality. That's something that we uh, release in the courses. But I can give you an indicator of what needs to be done. And maybe that's enough for you to be curious and uh, encouraged to start to explore entering a world that gives so much more in the level of intimacy. Um, then we tend to perceive um, that we have a, a have the ability to experience in modern day times. So let's start off with modern um, sexuality. So certainly for my own journey in life, and um, I've been around a few years now, and I've worked with a lot of people in relationships, in coaching, and in therapy, um, and certainly through the journey of tantra, and both men and women. And I've noticed that kind of in my journey, in my lifetime, in modern day times, we don't really have um, education into sexuality. And not only do we not have education into sexuality, but we don't actually understand uh, what sexuality is about. Um, so, you know, we, we perceive sexuality as an act um, that we do when we love somebody or to gain pleasure from. Um, and we disconnect it to the much deeper levels of ourselves and yet most people are looking for fulfillment through their intimate relationship or an intimate connection and they're not sure how to go about that and certainly um, it, it hasn't really changed in the last 50 years or so although there is sex education now in schools in my day that was how the frogs procreated and that his, <laughs> human beings were similar and you know how not to get pregnant and that was the ultimate part of it um, and then for adults, there's much more out there now for sex education and sex therapy um, to try and help people with their relationships in connecting. But again, it works at, from a tantric perspective, this works at a much more superficial level than actually you can truly, truly achieve with somebody. And it's only now in my first tantric relationship um, with my partner that I'm actually achieving the kind of levels of connection and intimacy that I have been craving for prior to that um, and it needs both partners really to kind of be coming from a certain perspective and a certain attitude and that comes with the education that Tantra gives you 
for both parties to be coming from the same position and being much more open-minded uh, and, and much more vulnerable in their approach to, uh, to entering into relationships. So in modern day times, most people are educated by their first sexual experience or the first few sexual experiences. So the way that they will perceive their sexuality or how to be sexual is very much dominated by these original perceptions and then patterns that are created, either ones of a good experience or ones of maybe not such an enjoyable experience or maybe even a painful or traumatic experience. And then we cover those patterns, uh, carry those patterns with us, and we start to enter into each new relationship, carrying that baggage from the previous relationships, which, guess what, has a kind of negative impact because if, you've, if it's a negative um, experiences that you've had, because you're entering and approaching it like that, you're already creating barriers for you to, able, to be able to be in a very open and loving relationship because you're coming in with preconceptions about how relationships might be or how sexuality might be. And we move forward with that and then obviously we're setting up our own barriers to create failure or maybe not a failure of relationship but disconnect in relationships which grows um, because we're not really taking the responsibility for ourselves in that journey and releasing the baggage from relationships that are before so i see this all the time with friends and with clients and the customers that they talk to me about their fears and if you actually look at it the fears will stem back from the first relationship and then get compounded as they go through but they've never shed that fear so every time they enter into that relationship they're setting up the scenario for those things to happen now if you've had very positive experiences then you're doing the reverse and you're coming into each relationship with a positive and open way of being but that doesn't mean that somebody else isn't bringing their baggage in and then you can actually end up being hurt by that because you're not expecting certain behaviors or certain ways of being. So it's relationship and sexuality in Tantra, they kind of go hand in hand. And in modern day society, we said we've been moving more and more to disconnecting that. Um, so we have a much more freedom around sexuality. There's much more freedom about kind of, you know, um, having an open way of life, um, not necessarily requiring a partner or one partner in modern day times. Um, and you know that it's quite normal especially in the UK and Scotland you know people go out and they get drunk they pick somebody up for the night and they have their sexual experience normally very unconsciously because it's normally requiring uh, alcohol involved in it and they're not really conscious about the connection they're making it's a stranger it's ships passing in the night um, so that's you know definitely one side of it the online dating scene I found was very much like that when I was experiencing it um, I actually found if I was trying to get to connect to somebody and get to know them, if I hadn't ended up in bed with them within the first three dates, then um, that was a no-no. Um, I wasn't handing it out. So I was seeing a very big um, lack of people kind of understanding what's really needed for connection and relationship um, and confusing relationship and sexuality in that process. Um, and also then we have the situation that in modern day times that young people like young men are getting most of their sexual education from porn and uh, therefore they're also masturbating a lot um, they're chasing their own orgasm and in, that, in actual fact this is leading to a huge level of impotency in young men um, so even people young guys in their 20s the, the levels of impotency are really high the statistics are really really high and they actually find themselves very blocked um, through their ed educating themselves through the porn and then what's happening is as they interact with young women of their own age they aren't able to be present in their masculine they don't know how to be and they're, they've got this lack of potency and so the young women believe that there's something wrong with them because the young men can't perform in the same way and then there becomes a huge block and a huge amount of self-doubt for those young women. And then whatever happens is that both parties are kind of chasing the orgasm. Porn gives the indication that you need to get your orgasm, you're chasing it. And men are chasing that very small pleasure of, uh, of ejaculation. And the women are then trying to chase their pleasure because they've only got a tiny small time frame to get that in <laughs> before the man ejaculates and he rolls over and he falls asleep and it's all over. Standing joke that's often told and amusing um, amongst most women, you know, that the man rolls over after he's uh, come and then that's it, it's all over and done with. And um, the woman's still ready to go, she's just warming up, and the guy's out for the count having a snooze in general. So, I mean, these are just kind of more on the negative side. Obviously, there are people that have very good connections, very good and healthy sex lives, um, and, and good intimacy in their relationship. But what I'm pointing out are some of the barriers. 
And one of the reasons is that the way that we tend to connect in relationship and in sexuality is that we're connecting from, um, from a much more primitive level than we do in, in Tantra. And what we're doing is we have an unconscious drive that's coming from our root chakra um, and from our sacral chakra. These are the two lowest chakras in the body and chakras being uh, energetic centers. And there they are primary will drive from a primitive physical aspect of physical pleasure and from an emotional aspect of wanting to be desired, to be loved, to be needed. Um, and so we have the sexual energy coming from the second chakra and we have the vital life force of feeling safe and secure and um, vitality coming from the second chakra, uh, the, th the first chakra. And we also can move into the role of dominance and submission where people don't really know um, the role they're meant to be playing um, so people can enter I have many clients where they they've always waiting for the guy to the women are always waiting for the man to initiate um, they don't really know how to respond or how to initiate sexuality so they've, they've come into a role of allowing the man to be dominant and them to be submissive and I don't necessarily mean in violence I just or in abuse I just mean in the in the, in the role playing of the sexuality and sometimes it's the other way around as well that you know men are waiting for the woman to take charge and there's women that have learned to be much more proactive and more masculine in their role of approaching um, uh, finding sexuality and, 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 and uh, finding their mates and the men are kind of just falling into that and then actually they're kind of taking on a more feminine role and I'll explain that in a minute. So this creates a mismatch and as women have moved more and more into gaining financial independence and into working into moving into the workplace so they've also been stepping much much more into the masculine energy they've been mimicking the man and therefore there's a male energy so a lot of independent women if they're not all not married um, can be single to till quite late on into their 30s 40s 50s and they say you know well, I don't understand you know they can be very beautiful very stunning but I don't understand why men don't want to be in relationship with me it's quite easy the energy that they're emitting is that of the masculine of being in control in command and therefore even if a man is very attracted to that woman from the physical um, there is an energy that's there that actually see them as a they go into the combative energy subconsciously and competitive energy because what they're picking up is the masculine resonance and that's not what they want out of a relationship there's a lot of misconceptions about the roles of femininity and masculinity in modern day times and Tantra defines those roles very very clearly to allow us to address that and rebalance that. So let's have a look then in, um, in the Tantric way, what, what's different about Tantric sexuality? Well Tantric sexuality, um, basically what, what you're working with understanding energy, Tantra is all about energy as I say in, in every uh, talk I'm doing, Tantra is all about energy and so here you actually start to understand how the energy in your body works, how the energy in your body connects um, and the impact that it has on the outside world around you. Now most of us are traveling through life unaware that we have these very powerful energetic bodies that emit and receive energy from other people in the world around us and that we're emitting um, energy out to that world as well and receiving in from it. And therefore they have no conscious awareness of it or why or how they're doing to it, they're just responding to those energies. Um, and then if you allow the ego to be in control of the mind and the unconsciousness around the energy, we're being much, much more uh, led by our primary senses, um, either for taking what we desire or protecting ourselves from harm and pain and hiding our vulnerability. And so that doesn't really allow us to enter into relationships or into sexual union in a very conscious manner. And I, I never ever forget one of my cousins coming over from Italy when I was much younger, when I was in my late teens, and he was in his early 20s, and uh, as an Italian they don't drink very much, and they're very much into their sexuality and, and into the wooing and the courting. And he was um, absolutely shocked when he came over to the UK. He was like, how on earth do British women put up with, um, you know, British men always being so drunk? How can they possibly perform in bed? And how can there any, be any sort of real connection and intimacy and real lovemaking in that process? And he would really picked on something, this conscious um, integration um, uh, and connection. 
And I was laughing, saying, well, because most of the British women are also drinking and therefore entering into it in an unconscious way as well. I and mean, we were talking about young people at that time um, when we were at university. But, you know, even that is seen very clearly around um, even lots of single men and women in their 30s and 40s um, will go and have a few drinks before they feel courageous enough to engage um, in uh, becoming intimate um, if they're single. So these are things that are kind of um, very key. So Tantra is very different. It's about being really conscious about the decisions that you're making, both for your intimacy and for your, um, for your relationship, for your sexuality. And it's being really conscious of yourself as an energetic being. And let me try and explain that a little bit as well. So as a woman, let's go to being a woman. Uh, in, uh, in, ta in Tantra. So we have the masculine and the feminine energies and in each of us we have the, fast the feminine and masculine energies. It's just that if you're born into the female body you have the tendency of the vessel more to the feminine but you have the masculine and the feminine in your body. The right side of the body is the masculine emissive energy and the left side of the body is the receptive feminine energy. Okay, and then if you're in the female form, you have more tendency to the feminine, and if you're born in the masculine vessel, then you'll have more tendency to the male energy. And we're going to keep it simple here because there's lots of different tangents we can go on about about um, uh, same sex relationships and all sorts of things, but I'm going to keep this very simple for this talk. And therefore, we have a, we have a role to play now. The feminine is all about. Um, the energy being receptive, being nurturing, being chaotic, pushing the boundaries. You know, like if you imagine a storm at sea and there's a lighthouse, the feminine is the sea around the lighthouse. She can be really stormy, crashing down, wanting to smash and break and destroy, or she can be really calm, lapping uh, the rocks uh, at the base of the lighthouse nice and soothingly and calmly. She's an ocean of uh, creativity, she can hold and harbour lots of life and vitality, you know, and she's a vessel that can lead the way to different places and different locations. Whereas the masculine energy is, uh, is perceived as being very much the conscious focus energy, you know how we laugh about the female being chaotic and being able to uh, uh, multitask and do many things but it takes her a lot longer to do it and it's a bit chaotic and the male being very much in his box when he's focusing on one thing he's focusing on one thing and that's it but that is actually an element of the masculine energy it's not something to be knocked out of the man or knocked out of the woman it's actually the masculine energy of being very focused on one thing making that thing happen and being very clear and being very strong no matter what the shakti the feminine energy flings at the Shiva masculine energy, it stays strong and present and focused in all that it does. And it's also the emissive energy, you know, so the masculine is emitting the energy and the fe feminine is receiving. So this is very much why the male has a lingam, so for those that don't know, the, 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 the penis is uh, known as the lingam, the sacred word in Sanskrit is lingam, and the female has a yoni which is a sacred word in Sanskrit for the vagina, because the, the lingam is inserting and emitting energy, and the yoni is receiving that energy. And as a female, the female is the vessel. The female naturally can transform and translate energy and bring it higher from the lower chakras, from these lower energy centers, to the higher energy centers. And that becomes a refinement of the energies and it brings us up to the level of the heart. So the female is the vessel that can bring the energy up to the level of the heart for both the man and the woman. Now when the energy comes to the level of the heart, we're talking about a true love connection, a deep and true love connection, unconditional. And in modern day times, most of us are actually very conditional in our loving um, we're coming from the lower chakra of the second chakra, which is all about emotions and sexuality. And therefore, it's not really, it's about fulfilling emotional needs rather than actually coming from a very unconditional place. At the level of the heart, that's much more the kind of love a saint would have for the people around them or St. Francis of Assisi for the animals. So as human beings, we can energize this chakra and we can start to emit from this level and it allows us to connect at a much more intimate, higher level, much more consciousness. 
And as um, as a female, you enter your sexuality consciously, you can then manage your energy. So you learn, in Tantra as a woman, what you do is you learn about the, how the energy works in the body, how each chakra has a specific role, each energy center, the seven chakras, has a specific role to play. And you learn how to turn that energy on and off from those chakras very specifically so that you can be emitting a resonance that attracts him the sensuality and the, uh, the, the the male that you you desire the, of the level of consciousness that you desire the level of intimacy that you desire um, for your love making and you can actually self initiate multiple orgasms in your body once you learn how to do this so you can just lie back which I do frequently and you can actually just initiate the energy in these chakras and actually create your own orgasms in your own body you don't even actually need the male to do that but what this means is energetically is that you can raise the energy in the male that you're with as well and it brings the energy up to this higher level where there can be more deeper connection more levels of intimacy it also means you don't even actually need to penetrate in love making to actually be orgasmic fully orgasmic so quite often my partner and I could be lying next to each other and we can both be very very orgasmic just by lying next to each other and through very gentle touch and connection we can um, feel orgasmic energy throughout the whole body and in different parts of the body so as a woman you even have um, uh, once you can start to energize in this way you can send the energy to specific areas and that means that you can have seven at least seven different types of orgasms there's one or two more than that but at least seven different types of orgasm uh, which is an advantage over the male because he kind of uh, only has one <laughs> in that sense so you start to discover your body in a more meaningful way and you start to be much much more conscious about how you enter into a sexual relationship with somebody as well and that consciousness also makes you much more selective about the partners that you choose because you start to understand about energy and then therefore that awareness means that you pick up energetically on the, on the partner that you're connecting with or that you're meeting or that you're um, going through your date of, uh, of, uh, of uh, some date selection let's call it that way and therefore you can actually be much more discerning about picking the partners that are right for you that will work for you whether it is just for sexual intimacy or whether it's for a much longer term relationship now the the other thing is that we don't tend to value the sacredness of the intimate connection anymore so we tend to just uh, a lot of a lot of people in modern day times tend to just go and have sex and it's an experience it's a physical experience that basically raises the endorphins and gives them a good feeling and that's it and it's a disconnect but they then can't actually necessarily connect they find it even more difficult to actually find intimate connecting relationships the more you have casual sex the more difficult it is to actually connect and find somebody to be more intimate within relationships and this is because you start just functioning very much of a disconnected detached level on on the lower chakras uh, for most people it's slightly different for tantrics but for most people and that doesn't allow you then um, the, the, the awareness is becoming less and less about what's required and for women genuinely in the, in, the, in the very depth and the very truth of their soul they want to be in a relationship where they're really seen and they can only really really open up sexually in a relationship where they can be really seen or they feel really seen where they can show their vulnerabilities where they can then trust the partner that they're with and that takes you deeper and deeper it's like a flower unfolding and the more that you know and understand that about yourself the more you can find the courage to start entering your relationships and the intimate part of your relationships with a lot more honesty and openness so that you can create that connection between the two of you where you encourage each other to become more honest more open more vulnerable and therefore you build more and more trust and when this trust starts to evolve a level of surrender starts to happen and when a woman can truly trust a man she will surrender deeper 
and deeper and deeper and I'm even just discovering levels within me that I'm like oh my goodness me I'm nowhere near the level that I can be to surrender and I've already been on this journey for a while and with my partner we can both see as we surrender more and more to each other in our relationship and in our intimacy then we realize that there's even greater depths that we can go to we're not going to get bored with each other for a very long time I can assure you and we don't need sex toys and we don't need sex fetishes and we don't need any of these things because actually just in the journey of discovering each other it's bringing us an intense awareness um, and uh, intense ex beautiful experiences um, that just become stronger and stronger so as a woman how do you go about this well, you go about this by learning about yourself as an energetic being and you start to discover and understand what energy means and you start to feel energy in your body and then you start to master that energy you understand how the energy works at these different uh, energy centers uh, of, the, of these chakras and you start to master that energy and you start learning how to channel that energy in your body you will then change the way that your energy frequency is emitting outwards and whether you're in a relationship with another person or whether you're looking for a new partner that energy resonance will act like a magnet and it will attract in people uh, your uh, relevant people that are resonating at a similar frequency both in friendship and in intimacy and it will repel people that are resonating at a lower energy because they won't be they won't be comfortable with what you're emitting and as you change your energy this frequency of energy and become aware of it you also change your consciousness you become more and more aware and more and more discerning and therefore you can be much better in how you select to do things much more intuitive in how you do things and much more confident in how you approach um, the different aspects of relationship and intimacy and there's obviously you know this can work both sides for the men and the women so if you're interested in finding out much more um, about it then come and join our uh, free online yoga group in there my partner and I do various talks um, about this and we can talk a bit more in depth and we are happy to share um, a bit more in depth about our own experiences this is a bit more of a private group for those that are genuinely interested in Tantra and, uh, and its different aspects and I just want to finish off by saying that uh, in Tantra as well um, it's not all about sexuality it's only 5% of the teachings and um, there's an incredible um, incredible set of teachings to teach you how to be much more successful and comfortable with yourself and how you live life especially in the modern times and the modern world so with that I'm going to end and um, it's been a real pleasure talking to you um, I hope I've intrigued you to want to find out a bit more and uh, we'll see you again in a couple of weeks I think so I can't see if anyone's actually come online here so it's not uh, unfortunately on my phone it's not showing me if anyone is uh, chatting or anything like that so uh, if you have any questions just post them underneath and then hopefully we'll be able to uh, see them in the future and answer them as they come up take care and much love bye bye